The joy in my soul, I've got peace in my mind. 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 Hey, man, I'm excited about going through the Word of God. Uh, you know, as we as we've been doing, we're halfway through this book of Matthew, and it has been a blessing to me. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Thank you so much for listening. If it's a blessing to you, make sure that you like, share, subscribe, all those cool things that help the word get spread to, to uh, you know, further and wider, right? So uh, we appreciate you joining, and we're going to open up in a word of prayer before we pick up at Matthew 14 and 22. Lord, we thank you so much uh, for just giving us the chance to uh, share your word today. We thank you, God. We pray that you would open up uh, our understanding, help us to see what it is you want us to know. We give you all the praise and all the glory, and we give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so at uh, in this section, or this chapter, we've been looking at uh, the man of the flesh, who was King Herod, the ruler of the flesh, and then the ruler of the spirit, who is the Lord Jesus. And of course, uh, I I believe personally that Matthew laid these two out to us here in this chapter for a definite reason, uh, so that we can see these two and make a decision for ourselves who will have rule over us. Uh, will it be the the spirit or the flesh? And so um, we're picking up at, at verse 22. And in this section here, we're going to see that a life in the spirit um will have its challenges right and we're going to we're going to see that here uh but though the life in the spirit will have some challenges listen to Jesus and his promise at John the 16th chapter this very familiar verse John 16:33 these things i have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world and so uh, we're going to see that uh Though you may have some trouble walking in the spirit, uh, living a life after God is definitely still the best way to go. Verse 22 says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. Now he constrained them. He he, he greatly encouraged them. He almost forced them, right, <laughs> uh, to, to go into the ship. And he's sending them into the storm. Uh, you, you think he didn't know that a storm was, was, was going to be out there to meet them, that a storm was on the way? No, he knows, friends, and he knows that the way to see him in a greater way than they could ever have otherwise was only through a storm. Uh, and we'll, let's look at that a little more. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. The ship, the ship is in the middle of the sea. It's out there. It's 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 not close enough to come in uh, back into the shore, and it's not far enough to make it to the other side. It's it's tossed. It's the wind has come against it, and, and so the wind is contrary to it. And they are out there having a real rough time. They're trying to row, but the wind is coming against them, making what should be easy very difficult. And folks, life in the spirit, led by the spirit, sometimes uh, uh, gets, uh, sometimes this life you get hit with some waves and some contrary winds. Living for God and, and still hit with uh, uh, the wind of money problems. Walking in the spirit and here comes that contrary doctor's report. Trying to walk by faith and suddenly tossed with marriage trouble or depression or some tragedy in life. This happens in life. In this life, ye shall have tribulation. In this life, there's going to be some storms. But let's read on to see what happens in storms. And because in the verse 25, it says, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. I think the book of Mark said he was a ghost. <laughs> and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. 
Now, the note there is that it's the fourth watch of the night that he comes. Now, there were four watches in the night, right? First, second, third, fourth. Now, the fourth watch was the last watch of the night, meaning that uh, we're not too too far from the night being over. Uh, and so here he comes at the end, with, at the darkest uh, part, of the, part of the night here. He shows up. And as the old saints used to say, he may not come when you want him but he's always on time. They look up when all seems lost, and here he comes casually walking on the water. Folks, Jesus could have called out from the shore, from the shore. He, he, he could have just called out from where he was, from the mountaintop, and just calmed the storm. But he comes walking on the water. He wants them to know who he is. He wants them to see how powerful he is. He wants them to understand how great he is, and only a storm could show this to them. Sometimes he uses the wind and the waves of life just to get you to see who he is, who he is to you, who he is for you, how much you mean to him. He allows the disciples to go into the wind and the waves so that they can see that he's able to bring them through. <laughs> Maybe that's why you got some wind and waves right now. So that he can show you that he's able to bring you through. Why don't you look back at some previous wind and waves that you've experienced? <laughs> and you may have felt like you were tossed while you were going through it. But when you look back now, and I can think of some wind and waves period in my own periods in my own life, when I look back now, I can see he was just showing me that he was able to walk on water if he needed to, to get me out. <laughs> That's what he does, friends. He's quite the savior, you know. <laughs> and so at verse 28, uh, and Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. When Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind and the wind ceased. And what we get here, friends, is that life in the spirit is sometimes about taking a chance. Yeah, sometimes life in the spirit is about stepping out in faith like Peter did here. And I got a question for you. What, what are you waiting on, friend? <laughs> Why don't you step out and do what you don't think that you can do? You say, should I try this? Should I try that? That's what Peter's saying here. He says, if it's you, bid me to come. And, and you are saying, Lord, should I give it a try? Should I give it a shot? And Jesus says, come. <laughs> His answer to Peter is come. Come and give it a shot. Come on and give it a try and see if I can hold you up. Isn't that something? I, uh, I, I thought about doing this, this YouTube Bible study for quite a while. I knew that I loved to study and teach the Bible. And I, but I really didn't have many opportunities to do that, and that for, for a variety of reasons. And the Lord put this study on my heart. And it was like looking out at a ghost on the water. I, I came up with every reason not to do this. I, I said, I don't have the time. I'm not ready. Other folks are better. <laughs> Finally, I just decided if it's you, Lord, if you can keep me, if you can bless this thing, then give me the strength and I'll step out. I'll step out of the boat of life and I'll try something that I don't think I can handle, but I know that you can. <laughs> That's all this is. And let me tell you something. I have no regrets about giving this a try. Yeah, there. I mean, you know, there are folks with more uh, subscribers and, and, and there are folks who are better teachers and all of that. But I know that I have tried something that God has given me the permission, the ability and the willingness to do. And he has kept me. There's been some wins. <laughs> I, I've, I've begun to sunk it, sink at times. 
and and and, and all of that. But uh, if you step out, there's a, there's always going to be some winds, and and there's always going to be some sinking times. But all you've got to do is cry out to him. <laughs> Cry out, Lord, save me. And he will do just like just like that. Just like he saved Peter. He'll save you. He'll save me too. He'll pull us up. Take that step out in faith. Give it a shot. Try what God has put on your heart. And see if he can hold you up. And I got a new I got news for you. He can. <laughs> By the way, this prayer of Peter is the shortest, but it's the best prayer prayer in scripture. He does not have time for King James Version English. Oh Lord, the magnificent. Well, thou thou art the greatest of the history of the world. Though I might be sinking if not right now, if thou Lord, if can keep. No, no, no. No time for none of that. (laughs) Peter is sinking in the water and he says, Lord, save me. And that's all you got time for sometimes. That's all, that, that, That's how prayer ought to be. He doesn't need all of your words. He doesn't need all of your uh, vocabulary. Just an honest and, in, and a sincere cry for him to come and save and help you. Oh, how wonderful he is that he'll do just that. Thank you so much for joining. We'll pick up again next time. Until then, God bless you.